Two Telecom proudly presents The Entrepreneur, the TV show that will determine new pioneers with groundbreaking business ideas. The winner of the competition will be awarded 2 million dirhams, which includes 1 million dirhams investment from Do, a telecom's bundle of business services supplied by Do, one year's free office space courtesy of Silicon Oasis founders, an advertising and PR package from the Leo Burnett Group, mentoring and networking support provided by WAMDA, 12 months of advisory and consultancy assistance from Ernst & Young, free media and editorial from CPI. I'm Tom and welcome to The Entrepreneur. Now, if you've missed a couple of the previous episodes of the show, let me just explain where we're at because our panel of expert judges have now selected their top 10 semi-finalists, which basically means that the owner of one of those business ideas will eventually be The Entrepreneur and the recipient of up to 2 million dirhams worth of prizes. On today's episode of the show, our semi-finalists will be headed in to a couple of exclusive business workshops where they'll be aiming to develop their existing business ideas by learning a variety of new approaches. By the end of these workshops, uh, our contestants will go away to work on their own pitches. And of course, they will have to master them before they get back in front of our panel of judges. Let's have a quick reminder of how our panel of judges decided on their top 10. From up to 2,000 applicants, only 10 business ideas made it through the semi-finals. They are James and Leo from Moodwright, Rashid from Green Mira, Samir from Smart School Bus, David from UAE Compare, Abdul Ghani from FlyConnect, Chris from B Grade. Faisal and Muhammad from El Link. Rima from Ikutur. Lulu from Nepish. And Ravi and Durv from Duplace. An entrepreneur is a persistent person who knows what he wants to do. what I'm looking for in the winner of The Entrepreneur. For me, the greatest entrepreneur is always and most definitely a good leader. A person with a strong work ethic. entrepreneur that I will be choosing will have to be innovative and passionate. Now I'd just like to congratulate our 10 semi-finalists on making it through to this round. I'm sure they're all very pleased about coming so far. But I'd also like to give a word of caution not to get too comfortable just yet. Now, Anthea is down with the contestants at the moment. Hi, Anthea, and is there a sense of expectation ahead of these workshops? Hi, Tom. Yes, so today's 10 applicants are through in the auditorium. They're getting ready for one of their first workshops that's part one of three today. Now, the first one's going to be focusing on the secrets of success. Now, I think that I'm going to sneak in around the back and try and learn those secrets myself, too. See you in a bit. What do you think are the main factors 
uh, that uh, startup failed. Okay. Lack of cash. Lack of cash, okay. Number one uh, failure factor is your attitude. The attitude of successful entrepreneur is only way forward. There is no way back. The second one is a sacrifice. One of the other biggest reasons the company failed because entrepreneurs think that they're best at everything. So, and they're trying to do everything in the company and then they fail. You know, in those tough days where you have to face challenges, what will pull you out of bed with this business is, I want to help others, I want to help people. Close your eyes and do this exercise before your presentation, okay? Close your eyes now. And just, just have a look at yourself. Imagine that you can float above the horizon, zoom out really, really high into the sky. Just you can see Dubai. And perhaps you can see a little tiny dot of yourself somewhere below. What I got from that was that, uh, you know, such a, such a long uh, timeline, life in general, and this is a, a focal point that you're, you're actually absolutely focused on at one specific time. But overall, in the general picture of things, it's something that you can move on from if you don't succeed. Exactly. And the thing is, guys, and this is a success mindset, because there will be challenges. Uh, there's a great Michael Jordan quote in sports, and it says, he says something along the lines of, I've missed 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost, you know, 400 games. You know, 19 times I've been relied on to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over in my life, and that is why I succeed. And I think that's a pretty cool uh, quote that can transcend not just sport, but just in general, so. Hi, Oksana. How was it? It was great. Okay, well, I just want to ask you a few questions about how your Secrets to Success um, workshop went. Mm -hmm. um, how was participation from the applicants? I was actually very, very, you know, impressed. It was wonderful participation. Who do you think shone the most? Not who do you think is going to be the entrepreneur, but who do you think really shone today in the audience? Uh, the young gentleman who was sitting in front of me have, you know, and wonderful comment. It was good. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I think the majority of people in here um, have kind of got a, a similar mindset to, to what the, you know, the lady was talking about anyway. And the, the, girl, the girl next to him was really, really confident. There's no such thing as failure as such. And, and that's why I also objected when she was speaking and I said, you know, I kind of disagree because it's, it's, it's always an option, but it's not necessarily a failure as in like the world has ended and, and that's it. I took this session as a video replay of my life. So Tom, the Secrets of Success workshop is in the bag. Everybody has that secret tucked away in their back pocket for now. They're having a quick break, and then we're gonna be going back through for the second workshop, which is gonna be dealing with how to influence people. Welcome back to The Entrepreneur. Now, the first part of the workshop dealt with the secrets of success with Oksana Tashikova. The second part is all about influence. Good afternoon, my name is Peter Heredia. I'm just gonna put out some items on the table, all right? I'm going to give you a scenario each, okay? And then I want you to read that scenario and I want you to come out here and choose an item that'll help you. I'd like you to team up with another idea, please. So I'm gonna ask you to see if you can identify what their need is, okay, by asking questions. Is that okay? Is everybody pretty clear with that? So can you, can you just clarify, are, are we asking questions to another group yes. about their particular product and, and we just need to establish why they picked it up. Yes, you're asking about their scenario. You're trying to establish their needs. What happened to you today? Okay, sorry, can I just stop after the first question? Have one of the rule, have one of the directions been broken there? No? There's an assumption that something's happened today. Did something happen that was out of the ordinary? 
Uh, well, it depends. What do you define as ordinary? <laughs> okay, be a little bit. <laughs> okay, not as tough. How are you? I'm, I'm fantastic. How are you? And, um... <laughs> Was that an answer? <laughs> Where were you today? <laughs> oh, it's a shirt! It's a shirt, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, How are you, mate? Very good. Very good, mate. How are you? Oh. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. How was your day? All right. All right, it's a bit challenging, as always. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Did you go to your job? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, was it a random day? OK, that's two closed questions. Closed questions are fine sometimes, but two followed. I'll, I'll, um, I'll stop you if I see Raising two. Raising <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody did an excellent job, but what was holding some people back? What were they doing? Overcomplicating the question. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, trying to build a scenario so they can get direct. Fantastic, guys. If you knew everything that was in that person's mind about what, what their needs were, would it be easy to influence them later? Of course. Of course, definitely. So we're going to move on to the next, um, on to the next exercise. I'm going to give you each now another scenario, but I'm going to be giving you the implications behind the scenario. One thing to make it a bit easier, see your scenario and you'll see more or less the types of questions. So there's a little tip for you. If um, the laptop that I was buying will hurt my back, okay? That's an implication. Do you stop there? No. See how far you can go with the consequence. Keep growing. What, whilst you're achieving this, what's one of the key learnings you've taken from this? To keep it simple. Yeah, ask simple questions. Yeah, okay. Don't, don't assume, you know, it's, it's human nature to second guess, to keep on thinking what's in the other person's mind. But if you want their information, you know, you need to actually ask some nice questions, like simple questions. I, I loved it when people were going, why, how, what does that mean, and things like that. And that's how you get the information. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for your time, and good luck to all of you as well. Over here, Peter, please. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. And how did you think that went? Yeah, um, they're all lovely, uh, lovely, energetic people that were willing to contribute. So um, whenever you get an audience like that, it's always going to go very well. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I was a bit terrified when I was asked to uh, come and pose some questions. But in case I made any assumptions, stop <laughs> me if I do. <laughs> Who do you think shone today out of the group? I'd say um, Lulu definitely had no problem with any of the exercises at all, and I could actually see her also second and um, also uh, prompting people or wanting to prompt people um, because she got it completely. She understood it 100%. I usually go to customers. I think that I know what they need, so I start acting as if I know everything. But I found out today that this is wrong. And after so much experience, you, you, you three businesses. As I said, we're always learning. Yes, absolutely. And did you like the fact that there was that you were you were hands on with this? You were involved. That it wasn't so much talking at you and teaching you. It was right, almost learn for yourselves. It makes you very to, to be very introspective. You look at yourself and you think about the kind of question you really need to ask to get the information. Which I think on a day to day basis, I do it intuitively anyway without really thinking about it. In this situation, you really do think around the question, and that, that does help you to, to understand and to learn how to ask a question properly, and certainly get the information out. Hi, Tom. So, workshop number two is done and dusted, and the contestants are out in the canteen using their newly acquired influencing skills to get free coffee, I imagine. When they come back, it's time for the third and final workshop of the day, which is going to be focusing on how to speak like a business leader. Thank you very much indeed, Anthea. And rather than focus on free coffee, perhaps our candidates will be better served trying to work out how to influence our judges. Stay tuned after a short break, the last part of the workshop. Welcome back to The Entrepreneur Now. 
Dr. Amanda is extremely eager to get things started. So let's go and see what she's up to. This afternoon, I'll teach you to speak like a business leader. Based on a strong foundation of science, even though I'm going to make it seem very simple, okay? When you come to do a business presentation, the vast majority of fo people focus on the activity. I'm going to teach you principles that instead help you to focus on the things that your audience will take away. Five key tips that can help you be a more effective and more powerful business communicator. And the first one is this, don't be boring. I want you to say two things about yourself that make me think that's who that person is and why you are here today. And your preparation time starts now. I'm the smartest guy. I offer smart solutions and I'm here because I want to help you manage your business better. I'm married to a beautiful Colombian lady. My name is Leo and I bribed my way into the competition. <laughs> of course she's going to marry me. Have you seen the size of the ring? <laughs> Hi, my name is James. I'm very pleased to meet you. Uh, my name is Derv. I'm 36. Uh, I look like I'm 26 and I act like I'm 16. Um, can't swim or play cricket, but I started a sports company called Duplays, and I'm here because of the cookies. So the second key tip that I'm going to give you is this. When you go to give a business presentation, I need you to know your message. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, we basically reduce water wastage. Um, we save you, of course, water, energy, and money. We appeal to Generation X, Y, and Z, who have grown up with technology integrated into their everyday lives. We make great clothes from recycled plastic bottles. The next thing that I want you to learn to do to create an effective business message is to use context or comparison. What if I told you that I could personally make you $3,000 next week, personally into your bank account, it's just for you. I can make you $3,000 next week. Is that a lot of money or not? Depends how much I gotta give you to get back. It depends on whether or not I have to sell both of your kidneys to get you that $3,000, right? If it's a freebie, if you don't have to do anything, it's good. If you need to remove a vital organ, it's not so good. So it's all about the contextual information that you use. So principle four, I told you I was going to give you five key tips that will help you to be a more effective, more impactful business presenter. Your voice itself is a source of power and communication. What do you think we're about to do? Now, I have a pile of books here, and I want you to find a short passage in this book that you are going to read, and your goal is you are going to be as exciting as you possibly can with your voice. My trousers are falling down, and I'm the coldest giant in town. Nina, Nina. It's just a monkey in a tree. Swoosh, swoosh, swooshing. A poor little monkey stuck in a tree. What can I do to help you, little frog? Zippity zoom, zippity zee. Here comes supersonic me. They make me look handsome and cool. Crick, crack, crick. One day. <laughs> crick, crack, crock. Roar. Forget it, mate. Oh, oh, where's the minion? Shark. Oh, help. Oh, no. Please, take a good look inside. It's a gruffalo. No, no, it's coming now. The witch tapped the broomstick. Whoosh, they were gone. Carrots, yuck. Thank you. Do you think that I want you to walk into the room and say, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I've got an exciting story for you. Do you think that's what I want you to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By doing this exercise, I want you to recognize how little we typically use our voice to match the words, to mimic the excitement 
or the emotion. This is your last key principle. Make eye contact. Look directly into people's eyes. Why? Why? Because you get people's attention. You should vote for me in November because there is no other individual, company, or organization in the whole of the UAE that is dedicating their time to saving their clients money. Thank you. Now, how is the use of that voice compared to how people normally speak? Very, very good, huh? Very well done, David. I want you to vote for me in November. Vote for me in November because I will assure you that I will have the heat turned down in this room. <laughs> vote for me in November. <laughs> okay, do you vote for me in November? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> We've covered five key tips. I want you to work on improving, on becoming great, because at this point in time, no one can predict what a fantastic business presenter or speaker you could be if you just keep working at it. Good luck in the competition. I've really enjoyed working with you all. What comes to mind if you think, right, okay, workshop three, what, what am I going home with in my head? I think it's basically taught me to take more time in what I'm saying and also how to pitch your voice. Um, but uh, yes, it's, it's given me more confidence really to speak in front of people. Who would I have voted for uh, in an election in November? Possibly David, possibly Rima. They did very well in the exercises. And some people, are, I think Ravi did a great job when it came to reading the children's story. He particularly stood out. Yeah, it was really good actually. So the speech or the presentation was about speaking skills and she did a great job explaining uh, the do's and don'ts of, of public speaking. I picked some of the more dramatic stories for some of your more dramatic characters, so yeah. So the shark and Rima, what does that say? <laughs> she did a great job. So Tom, that's it. We've had all three workshops. They've all been delivered. We started off with Secrets for Success. We then went on to How to Influence People and we ended up with learning how to speak like a business leader. I think that the contestants have taken away a lot from all of those workshops today. There's been so much information to absorb, but they have done so well. And I genuinely think that they leave today having taken on a lot of lessons for the pitches that they're gonna do the next time we see them. I certainly feel empowered. I'm sure they feel even more empowered. To you. Yeah, I couldn't agree more really, Anthea. It's been uh, all in all a very dynamic and beneficial day for all. But now our candidates have to take matters into their own hands. It is time for them to stand up and distinguish themselves as leaders. In the next episode of The Entrepreneur, 10 become three. By putting in the pitch of their life, they could of course be crowned the entrepreneur and be the recipient of that one million dirham cash investment plus an additional million dirhams in support and services. Who's up to the task? Who has got what it takes to be the entrepreneur? Well, we'll find out more next time right here on The Entrepreneur.